Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see in this game, we've got Alf Radagast playing the Tier 6 Submarine U69. This is a ranked match from a recent season. The map is Neighbors, the mode is Epicenter. I'm going to go in here real quick and address the UI bug that was introduced for 10.5 that was not corrected at the time that this was recorded, but has since been corrected. Okay, so uh, submarines having recently been introduced to random battles, you may have been encountering these a little bit more often. You could avoid them when they were in ranked uh, and, you know, play your random battles. They were also in uh, co-op battles, although, as is often true of pretty much any ship type in co-op battles, not really much of a challenge. Now, you may have seen some videos uh, on YouTube or Twitch that, that demonstrate that Subs can be devastatingly powerful if someone knows how to play them well. I have a feeling some things are going to be tweaked over the next six months to a year to uh, try and find a balance that will allow these subs to continue to be fun to play without being uh, overly devastating in the hands of really really competent players. Uh, Unicum and Super Unicum players have a tendency to be able to min-max and uh, to kind of find the, we'll call it the apex way to play a particular ship type. And when something new is introduced, that's what we want. We want those things to be seen and, and, and basically made visible. It can be a little frustrating to see kind of the rubber banding back and forth between, if we use the CV rework as an example, between uh, overpowered and underpowered. But eventually things kind of move toward, if not a happy medium, at least a medium. And I expect we'll probably see something like that with submarine play. Now, all of that aside, you can see that the team has pushed into the center really well which is so unusual. Yeah, all too often, you know, a team just wants to sit back, and it looks like the Queen Elizabeth's kind of doing that, unless maybe just uh, AFK. Now, if you haven't seen any uh, videos about how these work or played any of them, basically the left mouse button is sending out a ping. Now, you can't lock onto a ship to send out a ping, so you have to kind of get a feel for what it can do. And it looks like it looks like we're right at the max range of the ability of this ping. But there we go. Now it's within nine kilometers. And torpedoes that are already in the water are now going to start tracking the Trento. Now, will they have the range? That remains to be seen. But we got a couple pings on the Trento, and once you have pinged a ship, you can see right there, torpedoes home in on ships as long as there's a highlighted sector on the enemy ship. Now at a certain point, they stop homing, and they just continue in a straight line. And it varies by ship type. It's a little farther out for battleships, a little less far out for cruisers and has to be pretty close before it starts moving in a straight line against destroyers. But that's what you can do. As you saw, two citadels, and that's a quick 23,000 damage. I say quick. Over four minutes into the game you get what I mean. There's a ping sent out against Mutsu. Now, one thing I'll point out, this is how long you can stay underwater. That's your battery power. It's going to allow you to continue to breathe. 
So a little less than a third of the 20 minute possible game time. And, you know, something had to be done to keep submarines from staying underwater for 20 minutes and impossible to see, but uh, I guess we'll, we'll all see whether or not this is ultimately the way it's going to work out. Okay, so got, we've got torpedoes in the water already. There's our first ping hit on the Mutsu. And it's at 8.3 kilometers. I think these torpedoes are probably not going to have much of a chance, but we'll see. Another volley of torpedoes is up. I think I'd probably throw those out in the water now. Good guys have lost their CV, but do have a six ships to five advantage. And boom, down goes Mutsu. Now Mutsu obviously took some damage from other ships. And Alf brings the ship to the surface, and you can see that the battery timer now is climbing. Now, in terms of the gameplay, the ships are fairly straightforward. You know, there's a key to submerge, there's a key to come back to the surface. You can control your depth. Those pings can be sent out against any target, including other submarines. The T key, which has just now come active again, will send out a kind of a wide range sonar ping, and that will allow you to see where ships are on the surface or under the water. Hopefully we'll get to see an example of that before this is over. That thing missed, and that cachalot is uh, heading toward a destroyer that probably is going to be throwing some depth charges into the water. Yeah, Shinonome flaps it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.